Hi, everybody. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about <clears throat> sailing in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, what you're looking here is the marine traffic map, and this is live uh, for uh, today, uh, May 10th, 2001. Um, and uh, But actually, these are the tracks uh, here, these, these ones here that you see uh, kind of coming in and uh, out of the San Francisco Bay Area. So uh, basically, we're going to talk about uh, everything having to do with uh, sailing in the Bay Area. Um, so as you can see, uh, most of the ceiling is kind of in this region um, and maybe even down to there and up through here. So basically these tracks here are the ceiling areas and then there's actually some area back in here um, and then you can kind of see some traffic back into here. So um, basically uh, that is the main area. So this is the live map here um, and you can kind of pan around and zoom in and even see specific boats. Um, so I'm gonna just see if I can uh, load this up a little bit more detailed here so we can start to see. Um, so uh, it might uh, be of interest just to look at some satellite imagery. This is from a Wikipedia page and you can kind of see that um, the water does get a little bit uh, dirtier on this route here um, and uh, I'm familiar with the uh, Berkeley area and also San Francisco area and then even down to Santa Cruz. And uh, I've seen the water down in here in the South Bay as well. So <clears throat> it gets uh, very shallow um, in different parts and we're going to basically look at all the details for that. Um, but here's on a typical day what you might see. Um, this looks like to be a summer day. Um, you can see some uh, boats off into the distance here and I can uh, see if I can just uh, pan around here so you can kind of see what this looks like. See some boats out there with their uh, uh, jibs and spinnakers and different things. Uh, and then uh, maybe a kite sailor here. But this is looking at the uh, Golden Gate Bridge here. Um, and then kind of an aerial view. So here you can see San Francisco and uh, Bay Bridge. And then a bunch of uh, kind of uh, ships here. So this is uh, basically South San Francisco. Um, and there's a couple docks you can kind of see over in here. Um, <clears throat> And quite a number of boats here, and then a gigantic ferry you can see, uh, and uh, quite a lot of sailboats. These guys don't have their jibs, you can see, but uh, basically some ideas. Um, so basically what I wanted to do is look at these uh, charts. So uh, if you're not familiar with these two charts, these this is a Navionics chart um, on the web. It shows the depths, and they basically show the low water mark uh, numbers. So... Um, you can uh, kind of guide that based on the tides. So the tides are pretty significant, uh, obviously in a bay, um, and uh, they can vary quite a lot. So, um, and then these circles are the uh, buoys and some other things that you can use as navigational markers. So, um, first off, what you might want to do if you're trying to sail in the Bay Area is find out where the marinas are and the boat launches are, um, and uh, all the marinas, uh, you can use this chart as well. Um, so if you go to uh, layers, you can add ports, marinas, stations, lighthouses, and some other things. Um, and then they'll show up as little anchorages. So some of these ports are not actually possible uh, to dock in because those are for uh, commercial traffic. Um, but a marina here, um, these might be good options. Um, but basically, uh, you can see the different types of boats out here. This is live, so there's not a whole lot of boats out right now. Um, and you can see that these uh, pink boats are the uh, pleasure boats. Um, so a couple pleasure boats out here. Um, and we're going to look at some of the imagery, bathymetric imagery of what's going on. But you can kind of see uh, San Pablo Bay here uh, and some other things. So basically what you're looking for when when I want to try to sail this area is what marinas uh, for safety kind of reasons um, you want to be sailing near um, and kind of use those as targets um, and uh, head out to those but um, on this you can also see that you have little pink ones and it actually shows quite a number more uh, marinas that are easier to see so these kind of charts are actually used uh, more regularly on a uh, uh, you know a uh, 
boat charter on your boat or you might want to just study it beforehand um, so there is quite a lot here of information here so um, but basically what you're looking for if you want to do overnights are these little anchorages um, so there's an anchor here and anchor there and sometimes they have specific rules for that anchorage like how long you can stay um, so uh, basically these are some anchorages here so if you have five feet uh, that's pretty low uh, but these are the lowest numbers um, so um, you know it may be hard to get into uh, these marinas for instance but this marina you can probably do it but you got to know uh, precisely how to get in there so this area is pretty much my favorite area of the bay area um, there are some really nice marinas also up into uh, uh, kind of just all over here like Richmond and stuff is pretty nice as well uh, but that way you get a full view of the bay um, and when you're here you're kind of centrally located so if you look at what's going on um, so there are some uh, I, I was thinking of sailing down here from uh, the Columbia River and that's a whole separate topic in itself but I wanted to first look at where I could actually go um, if I was in the Bay Area so my sister lives over here in Berkeley um, and uh, my aunt and uncle and things like that uh, so I've never actually lived there but I lived in San Francisco a couple spots uh, down in San Jose Silicon Valley and some other areas uh, but basically uh, what we're talking about here is how to sail this so uh, I'm gonna put this on pause for a second here and um, let me see so Okay, so uh, basically what happens here is you got to come kind of compare charts, right? So I like the Navionics chart primarily because it has the uh, marinas, um, just because uh, I don't really know what I'm doing, and it's nice to talk with others at the marinas if you need help. Um, so basically um, with this chart, uh, this is a different chart. So you know basically what we're looking for is these anchorages and non anchorages so different types of anchorages here you can see that there's this big anchor here so uh, kind of suggesting that's a good spot so if you're looking for the free public charts on NOAA uh, you can go to this website charts noah.gov they have an interactive catalog and then you can kind of pick so what I did is I picked the major charts so there's basically this chart um, which includes everything for the Bay Area, but it doesn't get too much detail. Unfortunately, it's mainly for the coastal region. Um, but I really wanted to sail in Santa Cruz as well, so I'm going to include that in this topic. And then even Monterey, if you read the history of early California, um, actually a lot of it was around Monterey Bay and uh, Santa Cruz. And that's just because if you have a you know 200 foot boat in the 1800s, you're not exactly going to try to sail it into a bay unless you really know what's going on in that bay so they docked primarily off the coast of monterey and santa cruz because they felt safer there um, and even to this day there's a lot of rain and wind patterns that come in through uh, santa cruz which are pretty nice um, but also could be pretty dangerous along the coast um, so and the water is pr very cold so what i did is i took these charts i started with this chart and then i grabbed these charts and this chart and then went out to Vallejo here so we can kind of divide these charts up into four main regions so we got kind of the Golden Gate area the main central part of San Francisco Bay and then we have this North Bay which is San Pablo and kind of the South Bay and then even after here so the other thing to think about is the bridges um, but here you can see what an actual NOAA chart looks like it's a little hard to read there is some fine print and notes about that you might need to follow directions um, and a general thing is you want to stay out of the channel but maybe close enough to the channel so this channel has a lot of uh, big traffic boats so you can see these are kind of fishing boats out here um, and some other things um, and but the channel is used for getting one way or the other so if you're actually just sailing around casually you want to stay out of the channel and things like that so 
uh, and here you can kind of see some of the details so you can kind of see there's a bridge here and a bridge here so it is kind of a little bit uh, scary to sail under the bridge because you got to watch out with your sails and some different things so sailing in this region is pretty good so let's look at another chart um, so this is a more detailed chart and you can start to see um, exactly what's been going on here so um, this is at 38% so this is quite a detailed chart um, and you can kind of see now that we're starting to see we're at 67% see 75 let's get to 80% and see what we got so you can kind of see they show the direction this is a regulated navigation area and a precautionary area so uh, and then they have lower accuration area and then they say C note D so you can kind of see what's going on and then they have these no discharge zones um, as well you see you can discharge stuff from your boat um, in the bay it's already polluted enough um, so uh, and then you can kind of see there's some marinas here that are pretty visible on the map so Obviously, this is something that you got to know about in this uh, harbor. You can't really go in through this way. Got to be very cautious in a sailboat, for instance. Um, so this is kind of the main little idea here. So this is kind of a major harbor area. So this this whole area. So the, the part that I'm having a hard time with is I was over in the Berkeley Marine. I really liked that area, and definitely this seemed. Uh, like a great spot too just because it's easy access to Berkeley um, once you get here you can maybe even bike over to downtown or even walk it wouldn't be a problem to get to Berkeley so uh, San Francisco uh, we'll look at that in a second but um, because this is my favorite spot we'll look at this quite honestly it's mainly commercial traffic along San Francisco and there's not a whole lot of docking over here right so basically these are all docks but it's primarily commercial stuff there may be some spots that you'd have to work out a deal with the marina more carefully um and these these areas here are pretty easy um anyway so this is a great map i really like this one um and it's nice because it's a static map um but again it's nice to also have the uh marine Navionics map. So in the marine Navionics map, you can also see these little anchorages. I don't know why they don't show the anchorages clearly on the uh, other ones. So, uh, but these are some nice little anchorages, and you kind of see. So you got to really think about this um, in terms of the anchorages. So let's look at the other chart really quick here. So here's the San Pablo Bay area. So, um, and we'll kind of compare that to the uh, other charts here. So you can see the San Pablo Bay. Um, and it looks like, um, let me see on the, uh, you can look up this uh, Google Earth. So basically what we're looking at here is the whole entire bay. And you can kind of see, uh, it's certainly very beautiful up in Marin and Sausalito. A lot of people I know try to, uh, you know, do this, uh, the, kind of this area in the North Bay um, and then maybe uh, Berkeley area. So what I wanted to really look at also is the uh, San Paulo Bay and then this uh, what the possibilities are down in here. Um, and, uh, you know, from the uh, navigable charts, you can kind of see, you know, if we zoom out a little bit here. So it's, it's uh, you know, it, it looks like it's deep here, but what I noticed in the uh, other charts is uh, so these are the bridges here that you got to be aware of um, and then some context but so if you look at uh, if you look at what's going on in the bay let me pause this for a second uh, so we before we get into the uh, details I wanted to look at this map because I really like it, it shows very kind of obviously where the problems are so you know in general you could probably sail all in this these areas and maybe even back into here right but there's kind of these drainage patterns that come in through here um, so if you look at and that's like marsh and very very shallow so you want to be super careful about that kind of stuff 
Uh, so one funny thing is on this uh, bathymetric imagery, um, I actually found this with USGS, and this is a pretty good map. You have to click on uh, the base map over here and then click on oceans. So if you zoom in here, it will start to load and you can kind of see. So you can see how all these rivers drain. So it, one of the amazing things to me was just how all of California basically drains into the Bay Area. And it may have, there's something kind of strange in here. So it's basically, there's this mountain range here, and this is the Sierra Nevada's Lake Tahoe and so on. So basically it kind of drains through Sacramento. Really nice thing about Sacramento is actually it's a farming capital, right? So there's a lot of farming going on here, and there's a river here, and this runs through here. But as you zoom in, you can kind of start to see some things. So I just want to show you this. So this canyon is pretty interesting. This goes into Monterey. And we also want to think about all the earthquakes as well, uh, because there could be uh, tsunamis and things. Uh, but anyway, so what I really like about this map is it starts to show you some really incredible detail as you zoom in here. So you can kind of see this like trench in here and kind of how this all works. So certainly you can sail in through here and you can start to see some super interesting uh, details. So this actually didn't load it up yet but there you go so now you can start to see these details so um certainly um the uh water is super interesting and weird and even difficult to sail when the uh when you got these big holes in here so uh for some reason this doesn't show up on it probably does on the uh navionics let's just see here so this is off the coast of there, so it shows 121 feet, 170 feet. So there's kind of some weird, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, some weird differences, right? So you can kind of see these points here um, that this little guy is actually deeper than this guy, but it uh, looks like this is a pretty massive spot here. So super interesting. I wish it could kind of show the detail at a higher level, but... Um, and then you can kind of see what's going on in here. It looks like they pretty much just dredged this whole area out. So this must be a pretty important area. So you can see on the boat traffic. Uh, there we go. So this is the boat traffic. So unfortunately it doesn't show that at a lower resolution. But these for sure would be safe and then maybe right out of here. So when you're looking for anchorages, you kind of want to try to find something uh, you know deep enough but also close enough to an area if you need to get out of there um, because a tide change that you didn't expect or something so you can see there's quite a num number of boats coming into here and uh, obviously this is really close to this main high traffic area so i really like this whole richmond area and also berkeley area so you can see let's just zoom in and see what's going on right now so you can kind of see it's too bad they don't show uh, these traffic maps but not a whole lot of boats and that's a part that scared me I didn't see a whole lot of boats when I was out there in the bay um, and I was like man what's going on here this is kind of funny um, but so these uh, this can be helpful just uh, because the bathymetric imagery doesn't really show you in my opinion I just like the way that this looks when you get zoomed in and you can kind of see uh, some of the details um, and this looks interesting you kind of see the collection at the uh, gate here now you definitely want to make sure I don't know all the details on the bridges um, in terms of sailing uh, you know you might want to have at least uh, 100 feet or so above above the water um, and uh, now here are some trailheads so these are different trails so maybe if you were docking your boat the other nice reason in Berkeley there's a lot of little trails here and you can maybe figure out um, but these are definitely marshes and some other areas so we gotta definitely stay careful from these areas um, and uh, and then here's a ferry map that I could find um, and you can kind of see Berkeley over to San Francisco and then some Sausalito so in here there's a lot of ferries and it might be fun to you maybe dock your boat or even if you don't have a sailboat to take a ferry Looks like uh, this is a pretty long one. Maybe here's another long one. Just take a really long ferry and kind of get across the, the bay to see what it looks like uh, before you actually sail it. Um, certainly if it's deep enough for the ferry, it's deep enough for your boat. 
And here's kind of a live lightning map, which I really like, um, just to check what's going on with the weather. Um, and you can also see the latest earthquakes. Looks like we just got an earthquake uh, within the last hour or so over by San Francisco. So basically these are, let me see what one of those earthquakes. So this is at 10 o'clock and here it is 11 o'clock. So those are small little earthquakes, but uh, certainly it's super interesting to see what's going on. It's gonna load up even more earthquakes. So the earthquakes are pretty common um, in the bay. These are not super big like these, these ones here. Um, and you can see that was a 1.5, um, but certainly it would be interesting uh, to know about. Um, and then here's the official bathymetric imagery. So you can kind of see, this even shows, this is NOAA's uh, website. So maps.ngdc.noaa.gov, viewers slash bathymetry. So you can also see some of the mountain ranges. Um, and it might be fun to, uh, uh, kind of be in an area where you can hike or even walk up into the hills after you boat so you can see that this is kind of strange area it doesn't really show up but it's a very marshy area um, let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit and uh, get some more details and I think uh, so you can see it looks like to be pretty much the same and that's what I kind of felt like when you're looking at the water it looks like it's pretty much the same depth but if you're racing, you might want to know where it's deeper or shallower because um, that can certainly help you out. It doesn't really show, for some reason, the detail of the other map, and I don't know why that is. Um, but this is pretty... If you do the base map, you can kind of do this. Um, and then they got these ocean other ones. I think there's one other one that I really liked. Um, let me see if I could do this. High resolution, if that will change anything. Yeah, I think the other one was the better one. But this grayscale one, I think I use sometimes, um, and it doesn't even show it. So that's not good. So, yeah, so you got to zoom out. Um, so basically, it is nice maybe for the deep ocean sailing, and you can see that there are some rocks if you're sailing along the coast here and even these little islands out here. Um, so you got to know about those. Uh, but... Let's go back to this multi-resolution map, and that's pretty much the best one, unfortunately. So the currents, in general, you can see uh, what's going on. So California kind of heads down south, and then there's a little part that heads north here. Um, and there's another current map if you wanted to get really detailed, but in general, you can see it kind of heads south uh, once you're along the coast there. Um, oh, yeah, so I wanted to take a look, quick look at San Francisco or... Santa Cruz actually right so so basically if you're gonna sail down here um, there is another little area um, and that is Santa Cruz so this is Monterey Bay um, which is basically where uh, they used to dock their boats um, so this is kind of the more classical California docking location um, at least for Northern California um, and you can kind of see Santa Cruz having a few little marinas here that you could pull in and uh, check out. So I'm looking for some anchorages, and it's pretty deep here. Um, so I'm just seeing if there's any signs of places that you can anchor. And it doesn't show that on this map. So um, I don't know. Um, and we can look at off the coast of here. So it looks like a couple marinas, but again, I don't know if I trust these marinas. Looks like it's dredged, it's super, you have to motor your whole way in here. Um, and there's a marina here, but it looks like that's dredged too. So is it actually safe to get a sailboat in there? I don't know, you'd have to call the marina. They probably always will say yes, but uh, anyway, so I think this map is the uh, Santa Cruz map, yes. Yeah. So this shows the Santa Cruz Harbor here in detail so you can kind of see how they dredged it if you wanted to zoom in and look at it. But um, the whole Monterey Bay. So it looks like pretty deep actually, 50, several hundred feet even. Um, and you can kind of see this pointy area that comes in here. So. Uh, so yeah, so that was the 
kind of the idea. So it looks like in general Santa Cruz doesn't have a whole lot of options, but it's a nice little town. Very rocky coast there, so you got to be super careful in Santa Cruz. Um, and there are a bunch of islands, and you can take a look at a list of islands in California. Um, that would be interesting. And I try to do some other searches, but I have a bunch of nautical maps that I've just been collecting. These are some uh, different types of maps. This is the live uh, map. You can all see hurricanes, and just these guys you can kind of see. Definitely, you got to be careful down as you get down towards Mexico. Um, and then this bathymetric imagery. And then also, this is a uh, wind map. So you can kind of see where the wind is that particular day. And then also the NASA NASA wind map, which is maybe a little bit different, but uh, also helpful. And then all these tide maps. And then this is the uh, NOAA charts. And then you can see more tide maps. And then here's waves, so the waves can get pretty big. You can see, uh, maybe we can just uh, uh, look at this uh, image of the waves. But anyway, and then here's the uh, trade winds, so you can see kind of what's going on with the winds across the coast. It looks like it's blowing out from the coast, so it'd be the waves are going typically south, and then trade winds go that way. Um, and then the average mean wind speed. Uh, maximum wind speed and then some other wave height ones if you're really worried about the waves um, and so on so uh, and then there's some other people that have done some research on where they like to sail and I liked this guy's thing just a pretty simple showing a couple spots that uh, he liked uh, in the Bay Area and then there's some uh, websites like this one boatsf.com and then they have uh, boat launches so Actually, I need to do a whole separate topic on just boat launches, um, but uh, here you can kind of see what it might look like. So you got the uh, Golden Gate Bridge here, and then you're looking from uh, Marin over to San Francisco, and you can kind of see it looks pretty misty and kind of a beautiful, typical day, perhaps. Um, and uh, there's maybe some in general just the satellite imagery you can kind of see the whole kind of what's going on so this looks like a lot of muck here and uh, that's one reason why you might want to go down to santa cruz but this is certainly a long trip you can do about 100 miles a day it might be uh five days just to get to uh, santa cruz um uh, if the wind isn't so good or in your favor and uh, uh but basically uh I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope you have some fun sailing. It looks like what I'd basically recommend is uh, looking at these uh, Navionics charts and kind of picking out which marinas you like. So I'm going to go in here and zoom in and pretty much check out all the marinas and all the docking areas um, and kind of see. Um, I would like to make it as far south bay as I can. So there's a couple spots in here, but it looks like in here might be the uh, farthest I could go. And this is pretty nice because it's right next to the uh, San Francisco airport. But let's just zoom in to see what this looks like. So you can see um, that uh, there isn't any anchorages out here, so I can't just anchorage and row my boat in. Um, this side probably have to contact the marina. It looks like they got gas here and a lot of slips called Coyote Point. Um, maybe there might be some spots to dock in there, but um, so it doesn't look like that nice. But actually, right in here, um, this looks like a lot of motoring, and it looks like they have dredged it. Um, so I would basically be looking for sailboats in here and maybe contact the marinas. Um, and it could be, uh, you know, fifty dollars per day, or even a hundred. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe twenty dollars, um, or something. But uh, it depends on the marina. So, but these look. This looks great because it's close to Redwood City, and I know this is Caltrain, so you can get around. And close to Palo Alto. Looks like it's really nice. It looks like it's pretty deep out here in Palo Alto, but it's actually very shallow. So you can kind of see zero feet depth down in here. Um, but I did notice a yacht club down here in the South Bay, uh, but it looks like 
maybe you could get in here if you're really, really careful. So um, I don't know how that would work, um, but uh, that would be super interesting to discuss and see because I have some friends in Silicon Valley and they're kind of like San Jose area. So trying to get a boat down there would be super interesting. Um, certainly would be a day, multiple days just to even get there and figure it all out. So it looks like here is a uh, marina pier and they got a little spot here. So they have some uh, problems with, uh, so it looks like anchorages are pretty good in here, but the depth looks not so great. So, um, you know, basically I would look for at least, you know, six, seven feet and then try to anchor near those spots. Um, depending on, uh, so there's quite a number of boat spots back here. Now, the nice part about this, again, is it's close to Oakland Airport. So I'm just looking for a long-term spot um, that also is close. So this looks like a highly desirable spot, but maybe not a super big anchorage here. So you can kind of see uh, some marshland and not really even possible. So, uh, <clears throat> General Anchorage and then uh, San Leonardo. So that would be close to uh, getting there to uh, into Oakland. So it would be nice to be kind of close to Oakland maybe to see what's going on. So this would be high traffic area so you gotta kind of find a spot. So I'm not that familiar with this area so it might be, um, I'm just surprised at all the boat boating right on this area. So this is a whole research area, maybe even just to uh, spend the day, walk around the entire area here and visit all the marinas to discuss that with them. Um, and even San Francisco looks like you can kind of do that um, here, but yeah, it might be nice to figure out a good one in San Francisco. Um, and uh, up in here, it would be pretty fun. This is a really nice area, <clears throat> um, but uh, but it's not as young as San Francisco or Berkeley, so, um, but it could be fun to check it out as well, just a little fancier. Um, and certainly these are some other options. So I guess what I'm thinking at this point is certainly I need to do some more investigation on Oakland. Uh, I for sure want to look at uh, the ports facing the water, just much more fresh air. Um, so this one looks like pretty much the uh, main Oakland spot. So let's just see. So we click on this and you click the question mark. Tell us what the marina is. So Bellinia Marina. So this one looks quite large and might be nice to have a little grocery store in the area and things like that. So you don't have to research that for the marina. Um, and it looks like in general, this whole area has a lot of once right facing the water and Richmond does have some options up in here so I kind of stood on the coast here and was like wow this feels great the water was great and uh, there was a lot of nice little spots so looks like back in here um, is a couple spots but maybe something uh, where you really get a lot of water front so there really isn't anything out in here but it looks like on the other map so you do see some anchorages which is great but the question is can you row in to a marina or something and uh, this kind of stuff so <clears throat> um, but on this uh, other area, you can kind of see some areas here. So I'm gonna maybe just talk about specific at this point, um, but you can uh, take a look at all these um, and I hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, let me know if you got some suggestions. Um, what I would say is uh, take a look at, start with uh, maybe the, the marine traffic map and certainly uh, try to navigate uh, around and to the area that you think is best. Um, I really like the Berkeley area and Oakland just because there's a lot of people there and maybe affordability as well and the anchorages right off the coast are possible. So, um, and uh, anyway, so uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you.